now we come to precision audio and I invite Michael from Radio Acoustic to have this interview. Hello Michael, can you tell more about yourself and your company's products? Of course I can. Um, Radio Acoustic started out just around 2000, so it's a 16 year old company. And the reason Rido started was that we developed a ribbon tweeter which is truly unique and that is the core of uh, all Rido speakers. The ribbon tweeter is very different from a, uh, uh, any dome tweeter on the market. Main features is that it's very, very light. It's 30 to 50 times lighter than any dome tweeter. And because of that, it's so light, it has no mass. And when you have no mass, you cannot store energy. So the performance is free from any resonances coming from mass stored energy. And that is uh, really the unique thing about the Rider Tweeter. And um, ever since we have been trying to develop mid-range drivers that are just as good as uh, the ribbon tweeter we have. And we get closer and closer for every generation we do. In order to have very, very low coloration in uh, dynamic drivers, the key is to have very, very stiff membranes uh, that does not resonate where they are used. And we do this in uh, this version of the speaker where we have a ceramic membrane. Uh, the membrane starts out as uh, aluminium and then it's coated in a plasma process for 80 hours where the surface layers is transformed into aluminium oxide, which is a ceramic. And this ceramic is very, very stiff and because it's also a sandwich, it's quite good damped. And that gives a very, very clean uh, performance in the mid-range. And this is the way we build the Rider speakers. We always target as low noise as absolutely possible. And the lower noise we can get on the drivers, the better we can make the speakers. Um, this particular speaker called the uh, X3 has four of these drivers. Two of them is configured as a mid-range and then it's supported to the outside uh, for the deepest mid-range and upper base. And then in the side there's an 8-inch woofer that takes care of the deepest base. Um, Rido speakers also incorporate something we call the flow system. Almost all speakers are traditionally made uh, by utilizing two small parameters of the drivers and it's either a closed box or a reflex box. In Rido we go a little other direction. We target the airflow behind the drivers and try to make it uh, play through a damper instead of playing into a spring. And the analogy is if, if, you, if you have a car, uh, you could run it with just springs and no suspensions, but the ride would be, be very rough and resonating uh, whenever there's a bump in the road. The same with speakers. If you just have a, a, a sealed box or a, a ported box, it's very hard not to get influenced by the room it's into. And uh, by using this airflow system inside, we put damping behind the driver so that it has almost no uh, interference with the room, which makes the rider speakers uh, uh, quite easy to work with in, in, in different styles of room and sizes of rooms. The system here is driven by, uh, through ANSYS cables, and it's driven by the electronics we have here to the side, which is AVIC electronics. And in this room, we have a pre and power uh, combination where we have a preamp and a power amp. Uh, the preamp is full featured. It has a, a phono stage, which has very, very low noise. It has a DAC that takes all kinds of formats, DSD and PCM. And it has also a, a line stage, so we have analog inputs. And the preamp runs uh, the power amp, and the power amp is a, is a proprietary circuit, which is a class AB, but it runs in class A. It never switches to class B, uh, regardless of how much power you draw and how much voltage swings you want out of it. The output transistor never switches, so essentially there's always more current through the output states and what is needed by the speaker. So the output states in class A. This uh, stereo block has a 150 watts 
and uh, will have the double in 8 ohms and will have the double in 4 ohms, 300 watt, and has almost the double again in 2 ohms, almost 600 watt. So it's a very, very powerful amp in a quite compact package and uh, it idles around 50 watts so it doesn't get really, really hot even if you push it a lot. Thank you for today's interview. Have a nice day. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you.